all of the following will accelerate tooth movement except so we have to identify from these options which is the one that is going to reduce tooth movement okay whether it is corticotomy periodontally accelerated osteogenic orthodontics injection of parath hormone or bisphosphonate therapy so let us have a look one by one how each of these affect tooth movement now corticotomy is basically the removal of the cortical bone so in corticotomy first the flap is raised okay so this is the uh, flap which has been raised and surgical cuts are made incidentally between the bone to remove the cortical bone or to fracture the cortical bone now the aim here is to traumatize the bone so that it undergoes a period of repair now during the repair phase this is similar to how a fracture repair is so first there is going to be laying down of the callus okay the bony bony callus which is soft so there is a period of osteopenia that is reduced bone density when the bone is being healed during this period of osteopenia if force is going to be applied onto the tooth in order to bring about tooth movement we will see that there is a rapid increase in the amount of tooth movement because of something known as the regional acceleratory phenomenon okay or the rap now the rap phenomenon is very important a lot of questions have been asked in the previous examination regarding the rap phenomenon okay so because there is going to be a trauma that is sustained by the bone it's going to repair itself it's going to heal there's going to be a period of osteopenia during which tooth movement is going to increase because of the rap phenomenon now this principle of corticotomy has been utilized in vilcodontics vilcodontics is nothing but periodontally accelerated osteogenic orthodontics so it is similar to corticotomy the only difference is in the procedure so in corticotomy interdental cuts are made between the teeth to remove the cortical bone whereas in vilcodontics what they do is apart from these surgical cuts which are made interdentally they also have these burr holes which are present between the surgical cuts and bone uh, graft is placed over these surgical cuts and then the flap is resutured back okay so this difference in the procedure is seen in vilcodontics but both of these procedures are ultimately going to increase tooth movement now what about the parathyroid hormone now the parathyroid hormone is a uh, there is a signal or there is a receptor for the parathyroid hormone which is present on the osteoblast okay so when there is an increase in the parathyroid hormone this receptor or this uh, linking between the two is going to increase and this is going to cause a signaling of the osteoblast and increase in the uh increase in the ratio of the osteoblast and thereby increase in the ratio of the rankel now rankel is a ligand which is present on the osteoblast okay so it stands for the receptor activator of nuclear kappa b ligand so this is a molecule that is present on the osteoblast cells and when this molecule uh interacts with the receptor that is present on the osteoclast precursor cell that is the rank receptor which is present on the osteoclast cells these both are going to interact with each other and this interaction brings about maturation of the precursor osteoclast into a mature osteoclast okay which is ultimately going to bring about bone resorption now tooth movement will only take place when there is going to be bone resorption so one side the bone is going to be resorbed and one side the bone is going to be deposited this is how tooth is going to move okay so bone resorption is very important to bring about tooth movement so an increase in the pth is ultimately going to increase in the in maturation of the osteoclast which is going to increase in bone resorption so this is going to increase tooth movement okay what about bisphosphonates now bisphosphonates are a class of uh, drugs okay which are basically going to be utilized when there is going to be osteoporosis so it is usually seen in those patients who have uh, reduced bone density okay so in order to prevent further bone resorption bisphosphonate therapy is started so how the bisphosphonates affect osteoclast is in case the osteoclast have not yet matured that is there is an osteoclast precursor cell then bisphosphonates are going to inhibit their differentiation okay so firstly if there is uh, they are precursors if they have not yet matured then it is going to prevent their differentiation in case they have matured then the bisphosphonates are going to interrupt the attachment of the matured osteoclast so the osteoclasts are going to attach onto the bone surface okay and bring about bony resorption 
so the osteoclasts are going to prevent this interaction or this attachment between the osteoclast and the bone and they are going to prevent bone resorption so bone resorption will not take place and also they are going to induce apoptosis in these cells so that is going to bring about cell death so all of this is basically going to reduce the number of osteoclasts which is going to reduce the amount of bone resorption okay which is ultimately going to reduce the amount of tooth movement okay now there are various factors which stimulate tooth movement and which inhibit tooth movement so this is a very important table you should go through because they generally do ask questions like this in the exam which inhibits tooth movement which accelerates tooth movement okay not just these systemic and local factors but also the various types of drugs which are going to bring about an increase or a decrease in tooth movement so these are some of the important points from biomechanics okay so here the one that is going to reduce tooth movement is going to be bisphosphonate therapy.